The book is called Not My Idea. Uh, it's being taught in hundreds of schools in Illinois and Chicago. It's actually the subject of a federal lawsuit by a teacher named Stacy Demar. Uh, who protested this and was forced uh, to teach it. And these are the kind of things you can retreat to the defensible territory of saying, it's just looking at his, the history of racism in society. Uh, but when you actually look at the specifics, uh, they're telling kids that they are fundamentally racist because of the color of their skin. They're telling people that they should feel shame, guilt, and anguish uh, because of their inborn characteristics and traits. Uh, these are the kind of lessons that I've uncovered in dozens of schools. It's now being endorsed by the NEA in 14,000 public school districts across the country. Uh, and you can't retreat because parents know what they're seeing every day. Parents know what they're seeing when children come home uh, with workbooks like Not My Idea. Uh, and they're right, right. And they're rightly and very strongly pushing back. Let me, let me just, I'm, I'm, I'm scooting up in my chair, Joe, because I'm getting upset. Oh, you're upset. Well, I'm so sorry that you're upset that people are pushing back against your racist bullshit. Let me first just say that Christopher Rufo is making real progress in this fight against the racist communism brain virus known as CRT. That really seemed to start gaining steam right around the same time as coronavirus. Weird. He's been going on MSNBC more and more, and this most recent appearance on Morning Joe was actually quite good in exposing the CRT proponents as the extremists that they are, to the point where even Joe Scarborough himself couldn't get behind it. This is interesting, and it's something that uh, people won't say when they're on the television set. They won't say at polite dinner parties. I'm not sure why they whisper it or text it or email it to me, but member, liberal members of the mainstream media, Democrats that are huge contributors to the Democratic Party, and even people that like work for Democrats. I've heard over the past three or four years, I've got to get my kid out of this private school. They're teaching my seven-year-old boy that because he's white, he's, you know, a racist, he's part of the pro, et cetera, et cetera. Who would have thought that people would have a problem with blatant racism in their face? Why else do you think that these people constantly insist and put out this drumbeat that you can't be racist to white people? You can be racist to every other human being on this planet, but not white people. No, no, no. Nothing racist about that at all. What's going on here is that they know that they're obviously racist and they're trying this cheap dollar store Jedi mind trick that is apparently working on way too many people. That's exactly why the left wants to get this indoctrination into the school system systems so that in a couple generations you have a nice group of compliant communist sheep how do we how do we sort through all of this and make sure that we don't uh throw out teaching about slavery and teaching about racism over the past 400 years this has never been about teaching history we've always learned about america's dark past the problem is we don't learn about it in context and the fact that the whole world was dark at that time not to mention the entire problem with crt is this broad assigning of traits and judgment on people based on their skin color you can teach history all you want but you can't condemn people now because of their skin color but part of what we have to do in this moment joe and we've talked about this is to confront the ugliness of who we are and part of what i hear in these sorts of arguments is this sense in which that confrontation must be one where we're comfortable where we feel good about right. who we are who we are after we confront it so in some ways i get let me let me just i'm i'm, I'm scooting up in my chair joe because i'm getting upset mm -hmm. seeing right now in real time a reassertion of the lie the very thing that keeps us from becoming a different America because we don't want to accept who we are. First off, who elected this guy to decide what America become? Especially when guys like God are Marxists who want the country to resemble something more like the USSR. Or to make the broad judgment that we're a country of ugly people who are somehow connected to the evils that happened hundreds of years ago. This guy can call himself ugly all he wants because he is, but don't try to assign that trait to all of us because of our skin color. And he constantly tries to assert that all of us, based on the fact that we're white, have some sort of connection to things that happened hundreds of years ago. But that's not true many of us our families only came here in the late 1800s and have absolutely no connection to any of that and again the evils of slavery stretched worldwide and included black africans who sold other africans part of what i'm thinking is that if once you concede the initial claim that america in some ways comes into being in light of this extraordinarily uh, painful reality, the contradiction that is at the heart of our beginnings. Once you conceive that, the way in which you begin to think right. about American exceptionalism shifts. 
right? Wrong, 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 wrong. Again, like I just said, history is complicated and there's a lot of context hacks like this guy want to leave out so they can push a political agenda. This idea that we, we are wholly innocent, that we're absolved of our sins, right. that recognizing who we are somehow con condemns us to, to hell as it were, right. that we're being bludgeoned by, by, by our sins. But we are innocent. We have nothing to do with what happened back then. And that's the problem with what guys like this hack are pushing. This guy wants collective judgment and punishment, all based on your skin color. And he's very disingenuous the way he keeps saying we, when what he really means is white Americans. When he's talking about our sins, he's talking about the alleged sins of white Americans who are somehow guilty because they share skin color with some of the humans that did evil hundreds of years ago. This sort of argument, this sort of argument is happening right now. And I want us to link it to January 6th. I want us to link it to the attack on voting rights. This is in effect, in my view, Joe, an attempt to arrest substantive change in the country. And we give these folk the credit that they're giving, that they're making the arguments in good faith. And I don't think they are. And I'll say it to Christopher well, right to his face. I don't think this is a good faith argument. Period. Well, there you go. He's just openly stating what he wants. I swear these people don't have any self-awareness. He's trying to connect things that are in no way connected to achieve a political outcome that resembles a Maoist revolution in China that led to millions of people dead. The nerve of this guy to accuse his opposition, the people that are criticizing blatantly racist, actually institutionally racist policies that have crept their way into every one of our institutions. When he's the one lying about what CRT is, lying about what institutions it's creeping into, lying about history, lying about an attack on voting rights, that's non-existent and lying about any kind of weird connection to January 6th. So what do you all think about this? Has Rufo established a beachhead against CRT in the Democrat state media? Getting Joe Scarborough to admit that CRT is becoming a growing concern even among liberals is pretty significant in my opinion. Let me know in the comments section and hit that like button on your way out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next video.